welcome into worship this morning at Hope UMC. I am Pastor Lee Miller. Um, if we have not met yet, it is, it is so good to see all of you here with us this morning. I appreciate um, your willingness to, to be with us and to wear masks and to socially distance. Um, it allows us to be here. So, so you did wonderful this morning, and I appreciate it. Um, I just have a couple announcements before we get started. You'll notice um, a sheet of paper at each of your um, pews that says prayer chain. Um, Sandy is trying to compile a complete prayer chain list so we can get those prayers out to people. Um, so if your name is on there and it's in a place where you don't want it, uh, give Sandy a call. If your name's not on there and you want it to be, call Sandy. Um, any other thoughts on the prayer chain? Sandy. Um, and you can be on the prayer chain via a phone call, text message, or we can just email, blast it out to you. So that is there for you. Take advantage of it. Give it a look. Um, and you can just either take those or leave those um, afterwards. Um, you'll see that in the Westfield area, uh, Narthex area, there are three thank you notes from graduating seniors. Um, Gavin, Alex, Rami, and Jonathan Hill all sent us thank yous um, for the gifts that we as a congregation gave to them. If you'd like to read those, they're out there, um, and you can do that. After this church service, the way we're going to end is I'm going to give a benediction, and then I'm going to process out, and then our ushers are going to start at the back and let the people in the back go first and work their way up. So I'm asking if you please just remain seated for a, a couple extra minutes, and we'll take care of that. And then please, when you leave to exit the building as quickly as possible, do your, um, your conversations out in the parking lot where there's fresh air to, to blow all of this stuff away. So please exit as quickly as possible given the ushers um, doing that. Offering is in the plates on the back if you want to drop those in there as you leave, um, or just go online and you can give online and that is easier for us. If you need to use the bathroom, uh, please use the single occupancy one uh, over there. That would be perfect. And also newsletter. Sandy is starting to get stuff together for newsletter. So if you have anything that needs to go in there, any announcements, um, again, send those to Sandy. Did I miss anything? Any other announcements? Okay, now I'd like to invite Leon up here to, to give us our call to worship. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. Good morning. Am I on? Can you hear me now? Hello? One, two, three. David does it. I'm back there. I know, but... <laughs> you just lean into it. Hello. 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 This is a test. Are you listening? Oh, is it up? I'm sorry. Like that? It looks like it. You got a green light. boys. <laughs> Welcome to Hope this morning on the Sunday the July the 19th. Um, we will call to a call to worship. It comes from Psalms 86. Hear me, O Lord, and answer me. I am poor and in great need. Come, you are my life. You are my God. Save me. I trust in thee. Have mercy, Lord. I call to you all day with your heart full. Restore my joy, for unto you, O Lord, I lift my soul. For you are good and gracious, Lord, and ready to forgive, and you abound in love to all who call on you to live. O oh, hear my prayer, Lord, as I cry for mercy unto thee. When trouble comes, I call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, for only you are Lord, and neither are there the least that can compare at all with yours. We will now sing, Here I Am to Worship. <clears throat>
KPEW can't hear us. So. I got a phone call. Anyway, <clears throat> unison prayer. Pray with me as we see in these words. God of wonderful mercies, you draw us to your day where we will find friendship, peace, and hope. Not only in our lives right now, but all the time to come. Stand us with your gift. Dutch off and put us back on the pathways of service and reconciliation. Warm our hearts with your love. Lift our spirits with power. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We will now sing in Christ. Long. sit there and fall asleep on me. And so, adults, I need you to, uh, without using your voices to clap or to stop, just make a bunch of noise. 
um, without using your voice. Can you do that for me? Can we start stopping? <laughs> So the story I was telling, I'm going to tell it again, um, without all the clapping this time. The story I was telling was about the parable of the sower. And the sower is Jesus, and Jesus takes the gospel and, the, and his word, and, and he's talking, and he's, and he's spreading his word everywhere. But just like you, when I was telling that story, some people can't hear it because there's a bunch of noise. And there's a bunch of people that are saying other things and talking or clapping. It makes it really hard sometimes for us to hear, hear Jesus in this world. But there's people around us like your parents and Sunday school teachers and, and friends and everyone here that can help us to hear God, even amidst all of the noise. And the best part is, even when we can't hear him, Jesus is still talking to us. Even if we're hearing some clapping, don't forget that Jesus is still talking to each and every one of you at all times. We just need to listen. Thanks, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Our scripture reading from today is from Isaiah. Isaiah 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set forth before me who has announced from the old the things to come. Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. For have I not told you from the old and declared it? You are my witnesses. It is there. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. All the grace, um, all the grace you have will be appreciated this morning and in a few weeks to come. Over the the Fourth of July weekend, uh, Rachel and I spent some time at her at her grandmother's place. And, and one morning, her, her grandma had her sister over and and her sister's husband, and we were going to have brunch that morning. And, and so we're all sitting around the table and and we're getting coffee and we're having a conversation as people are getting up to get to get fruit and, and egg bake and bacon, and everyone's rushing around and having conversation. And then, you know, it's that point where the conversation just kind of falls. Everything is on the table. Everyone is, is ready for brunch. And so, uh, so it's time to pray. It's that time. And so we're all sitting down, and I, I hold my hands, and I put my head down, and I just start to wait. And I'm sort of twiddling my thumbs and, and I'm bouncing up and down because I get antsy when I wait on someone, even if it's for something like a prayer. And it was probably like 10 or 15 seconds when I began to realize that, that I'm not waiting on someone else, that everyone gathered around that table is waiting on me to begin brunch. I looked up and, and I joked, uh, I joked, I'm assuming it's my turn to pray then. And everyone nodded their head and we began to pray and had, had brunch. Of course it was my turn to pray. How could I forget the most basic elementary part of being a pastor? 
I bet you didn't know this, and, and I bet Judy can, can concur with this. Um, but when you decide to become a pastor, you have to take a bunch of vows. You have to say you're going to do some, and some of these vows are really basic, like I'm going to, um, I'm going to preach the gospel, or I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior. And there's these really big ones, but then they sneak one in at the end. And they sneak this one in, and it's the one that basically everyone follows, or at least all the people know that we have. It's this, it's this little vow at the end that says, whenever I'm in a room, I will be the prayer. <laughs> unless, there's, a, there's an unless, unless somebody of higher ranking um, is in the room. So when my dad and I are in the room, my dad prays. He's got seniority over me and that respect. But you're the prayer. It doesn't matter, designated prayer, whether you show up to a meeting at city council, whether you are at a wedding, a church meeting, family functions, birthdays, you say the prayer. That's it. That's the rule. When you decide to become a pastor, you don't get a choice in that. You are the prayer, whether you're the best prayer or not. Whether you're really, really good or just really boring, it doesn't matter. People still tell you you're the prayer because you're the pastor. It doesn't matter whether you're qualified or not. It's kind of like when I was growing up, uh, I'm the youngest of three boys, and my brothers are four and six years older than me, so when they would let me play sports with them or anything, um, they would say, you are the ball boy. That's the position I got. It didn't matter what we were playing. You are the one to chase after balls. That was my position. I didn't have a choice. They were faster than me. They could have got tennis balls and basketballs way better than I could, but that was my job. Our brief scripture reading from Isaiah tells us what we are. And we don't have a choice in it. And I really want to stress that about this text. It's a you are text. It's a statement that the prophet uses. Notice what isn't there in this you are statement. The first thing that isn't there is there's no question mark in this statement. And I'll get to what that, that statement is in a second, but I want to build suspense for any of you that weren't paying attention um, during the scripture reading. And I know I never or sometimes didn't do that. Um, but notice what it wasn't there. There's no question mark. See, God is talking to the Israelite people. God is talking to the people that are worshiping God. The prophet, God through the prophet, is speaking to a group of people that would come out on a day to hear the prophet speak. So these were people who kind of knew a little bit about this God. And so this statement is directed at everyone who had gathered, everyone who, who would come to hear a prophet speak. This question is for you. This statement is for you. Because like I said, there's no question mark. It's not a do you want to? Could you pretty please do this for me? It's not if you have time, could you spare a moment? No, it's you are, and I'll get there, it's you are this. And the second thing about this statement, this you are statement, is that there's no qualifiers to this you are statement. There's no if. There's no conditions. It's not you are if you do this or that. It's, no, it's not you are if you choose. It's not you are if you look like this or if you speak like this or if you do this or that. There's no ifs. You are. So before I tell you what this you are again is, Remember these two things. It's the gathered people. It's not a question. It's a statement. And there are no conditions. God looks at the people gathered who would come to church like we would today to hear, I'm not a prophet, but to hear a prophet speak. And he says, you are 
witnesses. Again, not do you want to be my witness? Now, could you pretty please be my witness? Could you be my witness if? No, you are my witnesses. Everyone can have no exception. No one got to run out of there and say, well, he wasn't talking to me. Everyone, you are my witness. Now, why did I build that up? Um, why didn't I tell you? Well, I think it's because we often don't want to hear you are statements in the Bible. We want those exceptions. We often take a scripture like this and we make them optional. We read these statements not as you are my witness, but you should be my witness. See, it doesn't, Prophet Isaiah doesn't say that. It doesn't say you should be my witness. It says you are my witnesses. We are witnesses to God, not we should be. It's not you should try to do it. Or if the moment is right and you have the right words, then is the moment to witness. No, you are my witnesses. It's not I'm too much of a sinner. No, you are my witnesses. My favorite part about this text is we sometimes act like God didn't know that we were broken sinners when God called us to do this. Like God was unaware that we screw up sometimes, that God was unaware that we're not perfect. And it's my favorite part because look who Isaiah is giving this prophecy to. Isaiah is giving this prophecy to a group of people who are living in exile in Babylonia. And a quick recap, they're not living in exile because they were good followers of God. They weren't there because they had followed all of the Ten Commandments perfectly. No, they were there because they screwed up. They had fallen down. They had sinned. They had made mistakes. They weren't perfect people. And God comes and said, you are my witnesses, knowing that they were in exile for not being good followers. You see, there's no excuse that we can come up with that God would say, you know, you're right. I'm going to find someone else for that job. You made a really good point. I never considered that. I'll take you off my rules as a witness. No, no matter what we think of ourselves, no matter how we view ourselves each morning, no matter what the world tells us about ourselves, God looked down, took all that into consideration, and said, yeah, I still want that person to be a witness for me. I still want that person to witness about me to the world. God looks at us, sins and all, and says, yeah, for some reason that's the right person. Doesn't make sense to me, but that's the God we have. That's our God. And so for us now, because there's no way you can tell me you're not a witness, I won't believe it. The question for us is how do we live into this identity, this who we are as children of Christ? You see, it's one thing to agree that we're all witnesses. It's a whole other thing to actually do it. And I think the best way to do this is to simply tell stories. You see, we're called to give witness to God. And the word for witness in Hebrew, and I... I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I won't go deep into this. But it combines two words together. And the words or the pictures, as, as Hebrew has it, are for, for I and door. The word I and door are combined to make the word that we read as witness. So to be a witness means you have seen, experienced, or you have known something, and now you're opening that door to someone else. What you have seen or experienced, you're opening that door. To witness means literally to tell people the ways you have personally experienced God. Not the correct theological answer, not the answer that Wikipedia would give you, not the answer that some Bible scholar would give you. No, what is the ways you have experienced God? Because that's what matters. We can rattle off creeds all, all we want, but if we haven't experienced that God, I don't think that's the way we witness. 
Maybe those creeds are your experience, and if so, use that. But if not, use your personal stories. I spent a lot of time visiting this one woman in North Carolina, and, and she had suffered so much loss over the last few years. Both of her children had, had passed away in, in middle years suddenly. Her husband, um, her husband passed away at an early age. She had three grandkids who were all in and out of rehab every couple of months. She was struggling with a, with a problem with her colon that wouldn't allow her to leave the house uh, for more than 20, 30 minutes. So she couldn't come to church, she could barely go to the grocery store. She couldn't do any of these things. But I would go and sit and we would talk together. And she would be telling me yet another thing. It seemed like every week there was another thing. And I'm sure you know these people. But there was just something else wrong the next week. And she would just be going deeper and deeper. And you could see it in her face that she was, that she was getting depressed and anxious and, and filled with sadness. And, and then almost on cue, every time we got together, a cardinal or a robin or some sort of bird would go and sit on her bird feeder right outside the window that we could see from the living room. And she would stop talking. She could be right in the middle of the story and she would stop talking and she would smile. And the conversation would change to, I love the burdens on my feeder. Whenever I get too down, I look at a bird, and I don't see a bird. I don't see a cardinal or a robin, but I see God. I see God waving at me. This woman experienced God as a bird on a bird feeder. A God that was willing to come down and wave at her. A God that cared enough to care for her. That was her way of witnessing to Christ. All she did was tell me, I see God waving at me when I see a bird. There is nothing fancy. There is nothing deep intellectually about that story. But that is a powerful witness to tell someone. She opened a door to God in the form of birds. How does she witness to God when she talks about the birds? I think this witnessing thing that we all are can be as simple as that. How, did you, how do you experience God? I experience God waving to me when I see a robin eating at a feeder. Or for me, I see God when I sit on the side of a lake and I just hear the water crashing against the shoreline. I experience God. Or maybe you experience God in the face of a child or a grandchild or a niece or a nephew. I don't know where you experience God. But what I do know is I don't think in the church we make enough spaces for these stories. We don't make space for each other to share these experiences of God. I don't think we witness enough as brothers and sisters in Christ together. And because of this, I think it's hard for us to witness to strangers. How can we witness to strangers if we can't witness to our brothers and sisters in Christ? And that's why I want to change that. I want to give you all an opportunity to practice this whole witnessing thing in a really low-key, non-threatening way, because I know it can be scary. I want us to practice this whole storytelling thing. What I'm trying to say is I want to give you some practice. I want us to practice. And so that's what I'm going to be doing for the next month or so, or, or if we're enjoying it for longer. I'm going to be opening up places and moments for you to tell me your stories and for me to tell you my story of God. I'm going to 
going to be creating moments for us. I didn't tell Bruce or Lois about this before, but they're going to be seeing a lot more of me over the next few weeks, next month or so. Over the next month, starting in not this week, but the Monday after, um, from about 10 to 11, Monday through Thursday, and if, and if they're not open, I'll be at the gazebo, but from 10 to 11, I'm going to be reading a book and drinking coffee. And I don't want to read a book. So come and share your stories with me. Come and tell me where you have witnessed God in this world. And I'll tell you different stories. I'll tell you more than my Paul story. We need to practice. I want to hear your stories. I want to hear your experiences of God. Because as the saying goes, practice does make perfect. And if we're not practicing, we're not going to be perfect at this. So come sit with me. Low-key, non-threatening. Just tell me a story. Tell me your bird feeder story. And I'll tell you mine. You see, you are all witnesses. And I know that's scary. That's a hard thing to be told you're something. It's hard to be told you are the ball boy. If you weren't chosen for that. You may not be prepared, you may not feel qualified, you may feel as though God called the wrong person. But no matter what you feel, that doesn't change your identity, I'm sorry to say. I read a quote this week that said, an ounce of practice is generally worth more than a ton of theory. An ounce of practice is more than a ton of theory. And I'm hoping that's true over the next month or so. You are witnesses. And that's scary. So let us come together and practice as brothers and sisters in Christ so we can witness to the world about how awesome our God is.
Now is the time we come together as, as brothers and sisters in Christ and we share our, our joys and concerns before the Lord. Do we have any joys to lift up this morning? I do. Yeah. It's so good to be here today. <laughs> yes. That's something awesome. But, um, as you might have read in the paper, Habitat for Humanity, we've got a new project we get to do in Blue Earth on 2nd Street at Big Rehab. We need a lot of unskilled laborers, so anybody can help. And I'm just, I'm just so excited about it. It's our first project in town in about four plus years. So, And Jim Wood and I are riding 500 miles each on our bikes this, this summer for the Habitat 500. We're still accepting donations, but <laughs> let me help. Make it up at Habitat 500. Thank you, Yes. Yes. We have a new great grandson born July 15th. Amen. Congratulations. Can you have a choice? Yeah. I got to spend two months on vacation in California, and most of you should know this. Uh, I, I was in rehab but, but for alcohol. Uh, and, and the joy is that I got to go through that and try and get better. I talked to my cousin yesterday. He had to go through it five times. Uh, and, and he's been sober for 30, more than 30 years. Uh, it, it, it's. I started the journey a little late in life, so to speak, uh, but it's a joy nonetheless. Amen. We're so proud of you, Jake. Do you have any concerns this morning? Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for calling each and every one of us here to your house. What a blessing it is to be able to gather and, and hear music together, to, to hear your word, to, to see our brothers and sisters in, in Christ's face once again. Lord, we thank you for the laughs and for the smiles and for the joy of this time. Lord, what a blessing it is each and every time we get to hear your word and be in your house. Lord, we thank you for this blessing. Lord, we thank you for the joy that, for the joys that have been lifted up this morning. We thank you for the joy of, of Jake and his, um, his announcement and his going through rehab and that he's out of it. Lord, we thank you for being with him through that. We thank you for, for the joy that, that Habitat for Humanity is on this community, for the blessing they will be for that new house on 2nd Street. Lord, we ask that you watch over all of those who will be volunteering, all of those who will be coordinating that bill. We pray for, for Stacy and Jim and all those who are, who are riding bikes to support Habitat. Lord, may you keep them safe. May you watch out for them. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the new great-grandchild. Lord, what a blessing it is every time we get to celebrate your new creation. Lord, we have so many joys in our hearts, and help us to be more mindful of your blessings each and every day. Help us to see the goodness all around us. But Lord, we come to you with concerns, with concerns that are weighed heavy on each of our hearts. Lord, we pray for our, our leaders in this country, in this state, in this community, in this church, and in the world. Lord, may they do what is right in your eyes and not their own. Lord, we pray for all of those on the front lines who are working to keep us safe, that are working to, to help feed us, that are providing essential care. Lord, may you watch out for them. May you bless them in so many ways. Lord, I pray for all of those who will be making decisions about this COVID situation in our schools, in our communities. Lord, help us to show grace during this time. Help us to know that there's, there's no perfect solution. Lord, we pray for all of those who are sick and hurting in this community. We pray for all of those who are battling addictions of all kinds, 
We pray for those who are suffering from mental health issues. Pray for those who are experiencing homelessness, who are experiencing poverty. Lord, give us hearts to be with those who are outcasts, who are marginalized and downtrodden. Give us hearts to be with them, to love them. Lord, we come to you now in a moment of silent prayer for those prayers that we can't express out loud. Hear now our silent prayer. 